Good morning. It is Sunday, kind of closer to lunchtime. We've cooled off a lot today. Significant cooling, 10, some places 15 degrees cooler today, Sunday, than it was yesterday on Saturday and even on Friday. And this whole week, as we go through this weather forecast, you're going to notice that the fog, you'll see it in the models, but the marine layer is going to deepen and shallow, deepen and shallow all week, Monday, Tuesday. It's going to deepen, shallow, deep. It's going to be a, a, a repetitive cycle, like a sine curve. And what that means is when it shallows, like yesterday, it was very warm. When it deepens, like today, it's cooler. Tomorrow it's going to shallow a little bit, then deepen a little it's, And you'll see those fluctuations. So that's sort of, I know it sounds, um, you know, sometimes we get heat for West Coast not having awesome tornado stuff weather, big thunderstorms. But there's a beauty in those fluctuations. And you can see them here. I'll push this up. This is the Mount Tam camera this morning. And you can see, I'll start early, early before I got up. You see the fog pretty shallow this morning. It was still warm this morning. And the fog pushes and see it thickening. It's subtle. Marine layer is about, it was down to 800 feet. Now it's up to above 1,700 feet, just below Mount Tam. Mount Tam is around 2,300 feet. And so you can kind of estimate that. And you can see the, the marine layer slowly deepening. And that's where the temperatures begin to cool and that's what we're seeing today so if you can remember this we go from time travels this way on this so this is yesterday and the arrow here is today over here this is elevation that's a thousand feet above sea level two so there's your inversion right and you look to the left right here there's the inversion the blue and the green when it's close together that's the cold air the fog warmer air above Cold air underneath creates an inversion because you're not going to get any mixing in, the, in those layers, not easily. And so you've got a deeper marine layer. So yeah, that's about 1,800 feet as of this morning, approximately. But this whole week is going to be this kind of a thing. It's going to go deep like today, shallow a little tomorrow. Deeper again, shallow on Wednesday. Deeper again, shallow on Thursday. Up and down. Not as extreme as the heat that we saw. It's not going to be hot, hot, but we're going to have these perturbations and the forecast that are going to include a lot of low low clouds and fog so that's the profiler and the profilers i was talking to my wife yesterday about it it's like because i want you to understand only because you're it's a weird thing to look at so you got to kind of go three-dimensional and that's a that's a cross section it's like if you took a um burrito and cut it down the middle and you have all those layers right well in this case this is the cold layer here or the i'm just going to make an example of beans or something <laughs> but you get you get a a layer down here that's cooler and then you see the layer up top so let's say this would be well, i can't really do it but you're just looking at cross section that's all i can tell you just have to the more you look at it, the more you think about it, you go oh yeah this is the top of the inversion and right and then this is down below the inversion right all this area in here and that in this case is fog and yesterday look how warm it was right how hot it was and then slowly overnight the marine layer deepened and filled like a sponge toward 1800 feet and we're cooler by a good solid 10 degrees from where we were yesterday so let's move forward here we've got the satellite this is an awesome um depiction here let's see if i can pull this off here i'll go this way this is the fog at point Reyes we were looking at you can see the fog is really filled in along the coast you san francisco marine layer deep inland this is as of about lunchtime today salinas valley a lot of fog fog all the way down to san luis obispo and south down to southern california yeah, just to about malibu and then the fog begins to clear out and you go why is the fog clear out down there well this little feature right here there's a load. It busts up the invert, takes that inversion and mixes it out, and so the fog doesn't happen. And this little low, this is an interesting feature for sure, and probably spin off a few thunder showers down towards this desert southwest. But that low is why you've got clearing in this zone here. And you got a little bit of a low up here, and that's why you have clearing in this zone. It's a combination of the marine inversion as it deepens. Sometimes it gets so deep when it's close to the low that it just mixes out all the way. So we're at that point. When you get to about, you know, 2,300 feet or something, the inversion is just kind of, now they're just low clouds. So we, that's what we're seeing here, just low clouds. So it's cooler today. It's going to be cooler tomorrow, milder tomorrow. The heat advisories have been dropped. Um, we're going to continue on with this wind. That purple area to the north is intriguing 
to me, because starting tomorrow, this area, I think you can see it, that's a storm warning. So the, the um, wind conditions offshore are significant. Like I wouldn't, even if I had a, even if, God, if I was on a container ship, I wouldn't want to be in 50, 60 mile an hour winds. That's offshore, Fort Bragg, but that wind will translate to junky, mixed up, confused, kinetic surf along the coast. So where you used to go and fish from the rocks, not going to be so safe tomorrow as the swell increases. The swell is coming up to around six to eight feet, not huge, but big. And then you got this wind offshore that's just kinetic and, and chopping up and, and destroying the rhythm of the ocean, the, the subtle smooth rhythm and creating this kind of frenetic wave pattern, which is dangerous because it creates weird rip currents. It creates, I mean, can you picture that, right? The waves are coming in. Normally, a good surf day, they're, they're spaced out to 10, 15 second intervals. That wind is going to change the interval quite a bit. It's going to press these waves together. It's going to confuse things. So um, I can't quantify exactly what it means at your beach, but it's definitely going to be chunky and ragged, if you will. These are the forecast conditions for today and tomorrow. And there's the wind advice or the wind uh, storm warning. And then small craft advisories offshore for us. Uh, actually, that's a gale warning. And then small craft advisories to the near shore. And then you got a red flag warning up around Reno, Carson City, some wind conditions in Northeast California. Uh, it's going to be windy the next few days, uh, for the next two or three days as we go into the middle end of this week. They're just going to be breezy. So that's going to kick up allergies as well. And then we talked about this yesterday in Minnesota. They're having some big fires up in, uh, I think up in Manitoba, and the smoke has been blowing down into these northern climes, uh, and that's the entire state of Minnesota under a, a air quality advisory. So that's for today, and probably will linger a little bit into tomorrow as well. We take a peek here at the forecast highs for today, and like I said, San Francisco 63, Ukiah 87, Los Angeles 77, so much cooler than yesterday. So what's that weather headline? Hmm, I think the wind's a big deal if you're offshore. I think the fact that we just broke this heat wave is awesome because it was is hot. It wasn't like a long heat wave, but it was a couple of days of real big heat. And when you have heat advisories or heat warnings, that's that's the, that's the one that messes with you. You know, we talked about that. And then this is the forecast highs for tomorrow, the forecast highs for tomorrow. Yeah, so about the same little cooler. Look at the model. Let's bring this into focus here. This map has a tendency to do this. So I like this loop. You can see that low we talked about down south a little bit, can't you? There it is right here. See the little rotation? How do you know it's a low? Well, it's going that way. And that's it's producing some, some instability. It's also shearing the fog away from the coast. And then up here, we've got another low that's kind of pushing in. You can kind of see the jet stream. Let's try to draw a jet stream in like this. It's a trough like this. It's upper, upper level low. And that's released the inversion in this area as well. So it's just cooler everywhere, which is awesome. Uh, and again, I, it's funny, the heat, I don't mind it. I kind of dig it. But then when it gets hot, like two, many days in a row, it's like, oh, this is exhausting, right? You can't, you, like I had to, I didn't do anything yesterday until about five o'clock, you know, like exercise wise, I just go, I'm just going to hunker down and do chores and stuff. Okay. So here's the model. Um, and this is today. Remember the 500 millibar vorticity showing the jet stream circle around us. And then you see this area right here. So this is, oops, let me drop this down just a little bit here. So we see the time. This is 12 Z Monday. So that's how low offshore. That's where our inversion went. Can you see that? I'm rotating, I'm, I'm rocking it back and forth. So that's the mechanism that's going to keep things kind of going cool around here. That low's pretty much cut off from the jet stream. And it lingers down to Southern California where that's going to kick on shore on Wednesday and bring thunderstorms up to the Big Bear area. But the thing to notice here is, so California's just kind of in the greens and yellows. It doesn't represent rain. It just represents... Um, lack of a stable environment it, it, it's going to these these reds like this area here that red that introduces lift right there those reds and yellows and that lift increases the inversion in the winter it means rain often but this time of year it usually just means increased inversion cooler temperatures but you see the yellows continue to this impulses pulses coming through the jet stream continuing a little green but some yellow continuing to keep the atmosphere unstable kind of making it hard for an inversion to set up making it very difficult for uh heat 
event again, which is kind of awesome because I don't, you know, I'm good with it. But so that's what I said earlier about the, this whole week is going to be uh, the marine layer is deepening and shallowing. And it's going to be that way, deepening and shallowing because it's going, I'll back it up. Here it is, deepening, shallowing, deepening, <laughs> shallowing. It's just, I'm just looking at the pulses going through and they will have an impact. Um, we'll also notice a lot more cloud cover, fog and low clouds at the coast. Um, that pattern is uh, conducive to cloud cover, to fog, maybe a little drizzle, some high clouds and middle clouds too. So this is a model we haven't looked at. This is GFS. This is just cloud cover, just a basic idea. So here we are this morning. And I want you to see as we go into tomorrow, clouds in the area. Tomorrow, Tuesday, clouds in the area. Wednesday, more clouds. So see, there's a lot of cloud cover around as we go through the next 10 days, right? So that is just sort of... That is just kind of illustrates the, um, the vorticity map we looked at, right? All those pulses going through, and the pulses go through the marine layers like that, and the clouds come in. Oversimplified, I know, but it really is not that simple, but it's not that hard either. Okay, so this is Mount Shasta. Uh, beautiful day up there in the Mount Shasta Valley. The temperatures in the Mount Shasta today are just going to be in the 60s and low 70s. Um, they could see up around the mountaintop of the next couple of days, they could easily see some um, snow flurries. We'll, we'll look further down the road. Beautiful shot of this. This is what Mount Whitney portal. Uh, 270, if you look at the top of the screen there, that's the direction um, of your looking. And you're looking right at Mount Whitney, which is behind the clouds. Whitney goes up to 14,505. And it's the tall, 14,505 feet, and it's the tallest mountain in the contiguous United States. Um, it's, uh, it seems not as tall as Shasta. It's taller than Shasta, but it seems not as tall because all these peaks around it are 12, 13, 14,000 feet. There are, there's a bunch of them in there. So that's a really high mountain range, whereas Mount Shasta just sits alone out there at 14,505. I think it is, yeah. Um, Let's see, or not 14,505, it's, I don't know if I wrote down Mount Shasta, but Whitney's taller at 14,505. And the first person, and I don't, I'm not buying this, they said John Muir in 1873 climbed it. I believe that. I don't believe, it was a, in, in the um, history books, it has him as the first guy to climb it, and I'm not buying that. I'm, I'm pretty sure some Native Americans jumped on that mountain pretty quick, because it's not a hard climb. It's not a hard climb at all, but he... Uh, at least in the, the the source I looked at, got credit for being the first one up there. Maybe he was. I shouldn't rip him on that. But I'm just thinking if I'm a 14-year-old Paiute boy, I am looking at that thing going, I got it. I'll be back at, I'll be back at dinner. Um, what else we got? Okay. Oh, and then at 13,000, I didn't know this, at 13,600 feet on Mount Whitney, when you get up into the mountains there, you at that point, that's where you need the permit. So you're into this kind of endangered... They don't want a lot of people tramping around. So if you're climbing Whitney, you got to get a permit. But the permit isn't required until you get to 13,600 feet, which they call it the, um, yeah, the, that zone, the, the permit zone, which I didn't, I never really knew that. So we've got uh, Mammoth. They're skiing again today. I know. Mammoth Mountain be in the 60s today, maybe even low 70s. Um, pretty dry there. I like this camera. It's kind of like the Palisades camera. Palisades closed down, by the way. They're done. Mammoth gets so much snow in the, um, I love this. I don't, it's like a, it's like one of the eaglets is running the camera. Yeah, that's nice. <laughs> yeah, I think it's, it's programmed, but that shot, I like that shot. But you can see folks skiing. That is, that is some diehard S, right? Oh my God. But Mammoth Mountains, I love Mammoth. It reminds me a lot of like, because in Tahoe, we have, skiing is in the trees, Mammoth, a lot of the skiing is above tree line, so you get these big, wide open bowls and stuff, which is awesome. Um, okay, so there's Mammoth Mountain, and then Seamer Lane. This is today. This was taken about an hour, well, about lunchtime, I guess. Um, swell small, tide weird, a lot of good, pretty good amount of water moving around. There's the fog. The marine layer is going to be a thing for them the next couple of days. Seamer Lane, interesting to me. Um, first of all, because it's right by the boardwalk, called Steamers Lane because that's where the steamers used to anchor offshore when they'd come in to, during the you know, early, after the gold rush. It's a great natural harbor. Um, but bootlegging. Santa Cruz was known as a rum running town. 
And prohibition is fascinating, especially on, I think on the West Coast, just because my, my grandpa used to tell me about prohibition, right? I mean, he was around. Um, and they would, the p b rum runners in, in Santa Cruz, make no doubt about it, especially Pleasure Point, was really notorious. And Bolinas was too. But as a place where you could bring in all this booze from Canada or wherever you were getting it, and you didn't have to go through the Golden Gate Bridge, you could go into Santa Cruz because there's all these little nooks and crannies in the coast there. It's not like you, there's, if you know Santa Cruz coastline, you come in at, you could come in at four mile, you could come in at one mile, come in at Pleasure Point if you had to down by Sharks. Um, but they would, they would bring the booze in and they would truck the booze up to the populated centers of San Jose and San Francisco and Oakland. Um, but, uh, I just, I think it's interesting that, that it was a bootlegging town. Um, what else do I want to tell you? Oh, the thing about, um, um, prohibition is fascinating to me is, can I, my grandpa told me some of this stuff, but I was only like nine, 10, but they really got, they really enjoyed, um, keeping that speakeasy thing alive. In other words, once prohibition ended, you go, well, great, bars are open, game on, right? They... They, they, they continued to go to these, you know, like the Philosopher's Club on the West Portal. I think that was probably a speakeasy for sure. Um, I don't know that, but I'm guessing it was. But people kept going. They liked the idea of being kind of bad, right? And it's the beginning, from my reading, that of people really getting into hard liquor. Because in San Francisco, Bay Area, San Francisco specifically, there were hundreds of beer breweries beer bre there are breweries everywhere hundreds prohibition comes in all the breweries get shut down right and so they start making corn liquor and whatever and so as people started that's when mixed drinks became a huge deal prior to that the american populace was all about beer probably wine um and some bootleg stuff but once once prohibition hit shut down all the all the uh soft liquor i guess beer and wine and made everybody it was easier to transport high density high alcohol content booze yeah, interesting and and i can remember my dad telling me his dad continued to go to like fun little speakies because it was fun there's bad there's being bad and they'd go in somebody's basement somebody's house there'd be 50 people there in west portal um and i kind of get that so it's an interesting little history santa cruz a boot uh bootlegging town um, Bolinas, a bootlegging town, Pleasure Point, um, you get, and you get the reasons why. Okay, so, and then the, the, the Eagles, every time I look at this, I go, they're going to fly, they're going to fly, and then they don't. They look like they're going to fly. Like, that's, I think that's, I can't tell now. They're beautiful, though, aren't they? Oh, there's, there's mom right there. And then there's, I think that's, uh, yeah, it's mesmerizing. It's interesting to watch. I don't know if you've been watching this. Like, I don't watch enough as I should. Oh, I had to go again. Um, I think it's interesting how they are bonding in a different way than they were, obviously, adolescents, teens. But mom, a little more respectful of their space. I think that's awesome when they, I think that's sunny. Yeah. Uh, anyway, <laughs> I know I'll have to go back and watch this. Have a great day. Today's Sunday. Um, we're looking at fluctuations this whole week. The, the heat is over for a while, for a week or so. So we're going to be up and down on temperature. So have a great day. I will see you back here tomorrow.